Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Today we're going to take a look inside a future restoration, which is a Panasonic RF4900 communications receiver. Very collectible receiver, should be a very fun restoration, lots of alignment points inside. This thing is going to be quite the beast to align in the near future. At any rate, let's take a look inside. Here is the very handsome looking Panasonic RF4900 communications receiver and as you can see it's a pretty large receiver. It takes up a big chunk of my desk space and it does have you know, a fair amount of weight to it for a solid state receiver. Now it's nowhere near as heavy as a Raquel or Collins or National receiver or something like that but for a solid state receiver it, it does have a fair amount of weight and they gave it some really nice handles to move it around. These receivers have quite a following, and when they do work, they do work very, very well. If you're thinking of purchasing a receiver like this, the tipping point of where you should possibly go, oh, okay, I better look around still, would be that vacuum fluorescent display or VFD on the front here. So if the VFD is broken, missing, or burnt out, that's kind of where you're going to want to really think about it, because this is a a component that really isn't all that incredibly easy to find. If the unit doesn't power up and nothing turns on, chances are that's going to be an easier fix than finding a vacuum fluorescent display. Or if these don't light up or anything like that, you know, it doesn't make sound. In or the repairman's world or technician's world, that's not too big of a deal. If the vacuum tube, which is the VFD here, is burnt out or weak or broken, you're not going to be having a digital display. So unless you can find a parts unit or a donor or something like that, yeah, you might want to keep on looking. Now, when I went to go get this receiver, I wanted to see if at least the thing even receives anything. So I've created a thing in the past, and I use this for audio troubleshooting and everything, and I've released this. This is another one of my inventions or creations. I've released this on Patreon. It's called the CNCSIP, or Carlson Non-Contact Signal Injection Probe. So it's the opposite of the Super Probe. The Super Probe finds signals. This thing will inject signals into nearby components so if you're doing audio troubleshooting or something like that or if you want to test out a receiver it looks kind of like a magic wand and i'll give you an example here so when i showed up to to pick this thing up i came with this thing right here so i'll just focus in on this so this is the cnc sip so this is the head unit. As you can see, it's just made up with off-the-shelf parts. This is a desoldering probe, and, and this is the unit here that sends the signals out. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn this on. I'll turn the receiver on first here. I'll turn this thing on, and I'll just put this off to the side. Focus back on the receiver here. There we go. And turn the volume up. And as you can see, it's... All the switches are dirty. It's very common for this. No antenna hooked up or anything. You can just wave this thing around. You can actually find out where RF would leak through the panel in the front. So you can tell there's good shielding over here. Not so good shielding here. Really open here really really open here so anyways I can tell that it's receiving just by doing that very handy little tool this works for audio as well to just use this in audio circuits and you can inject signals right into components without even coupling into them you just put this near the component and it'll put audio right into the component it's a very handy tool to have I use this thing all the time this is just a, another one of my creations that are it's up on Patreon that I'm sharing with everybody. So all the plans and everything for that are up there to build them. At any rate, so back to this thing here. So the receiver, it appears to be working. The display lights up. The vacuum fluorescent display is working, and that is a huge bonus. And it's nice and bright, as you can see. Now, one of the things that I kind of don't like about this is, you can see it only lights up the window of use. So if I move this around, you see it lights that one up now, but this one shuts off. And it kind of really takes away from the look of the receiver. 
So what I'd like to do, I'll just turn this down. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to have both windows lit up a certain color and the one in use would be highlighted, maybe by a different color. And then when you switch it, it would just move back and forth. And that way the whole front of the radio receiver would stand out. If this is supposed to have a dial light, which I don't know at this point, it's definitely not working. So there's, if this is supposed to be backlit, that would have to be fixed. So if you have any ideas for the colors for these, let me know in the comments below. I'll take it into consideration. This is that incandescent, there's an incandescent lamp in here. So it's kind of that, um, I don't know, kind of a dull kind of golden hue. I was thinking, I have some really nice blue, they're a powdered or a sky blue colored LED that would very closely look like this display right here. It's a little bit, in the camera, this looks a little darker than it is in reality. This is more of a powdery blue, and where in the camera, it's, it's a little bit darker. But having these display windows lit up the same color as this may look very nice, or some other color. So just let me know in the comments below. It looks like only one side is lit up unless there is an actual bulb on the other side that's out. Again, I know virtually nothing about what's inside this thing at this point. I've purchased this and we're going through this thing together. This is my very first look at this receiver. So as I'm opening this thing up and discovering what's inside, you're discovering it at the same time. So if there is a, an incandescent bulb on this side that is burnt out, you can see it's only lit here. but. If we go here, you can see this side is only lit as well. So I'm thinking that it might only have one bulb. I could install a bulb on each side and really make that display stand out. So there's so many things that can be done. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see. And when the restoration come uh, comes you know, to the time, we'll actually go through and really enhance the look of this thing. Now, I imagine there's going to be a lot of alignment points inside this thing because it is quite the receiver. So what I'll do is I'll turn this around. We'll take a look at the backside and then we'll go inside and see what we're up against. Here's the backside of the RF4900. And as you can see, it has lots of antenna jacks here and a bar antenna or rod antenna up at the top. So we have an external jack here to put 12 volts in. And this has the factory AC line cord, which is really nice that it came with this here. So I can use the CNC SIP to see which one of these jacks is active right now. See if the front end of this thing is actually working. So I'll just grab that again and we'll see what happens here. It's picking it up from here. See, this is pretty quiet. Getting louder. Very loud. And of course this is FM, it says FM there. So we can see that it's active. I'll just tune. Tune this, this here, you can tune this with this control right here. And this also turns the power down. You can see when it's red, it's at maximum power. So it is very sensitive. I'm about, right now I'm two feet away from the jack and I can still hear it. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm about two feet away from it right now and I can still hear it. So chances are the front end of this thing is just fine, which is nice. So that means that I'm imagining it's going to need a switch cleaning. It's going to need an entire alignment, maybe a recap. And the thing will probably just absolutely shine. This is such a nice receiver. It's definitely worth putting the time into. Unfortunately, it does have some cosmetic flaws, like somebody's dripped epoxy on the case. There's two little spots of epoxy on the lid, which I don't think is going to come off. And some of the lettering on the, the front is a little bit faded. So somebody's been dragging their fingers on the plastic and they've taken some of the white lettering off. But I imagine I can probably get around that. I can fix that up. So what I'll do is I'll get the screws out of the case and let's take a look inside. Well, after removing enough screws out of this case to start my own hardware store, we're ready to take a look inside. So what I'll do is I'll just prop the front of the receiver up here with a screwdriver for a moment so I can get my hands under the case, and slide this back a little bit, and like so. Let's get this out of the way. Put this behind my chair. And as I've mentioned before, I will not roll backwards over that lid and completely crease it and destroy it. 
Okay. I'll just zoom on in. Let's take a closer look at what's in here. It's looking pretty good so far. At least it's complete. So as you can see, you know, there's a dust and debris that can be cleaned out. Not too big of a deal. All the electrolytic capacitors that you see will have to be replaced because even if one of them is bad, it'll affect the performance of the receiver. So they're hiding all over the place. So there's quite a bit of work in that. As you can see, these are all alignment points. And they are everywhere. And there seems to be more underneath these boards as well. Well, these are alignment points. We have crystals down in here. Be interesting to see how close these oscillators actually are. If not, might have to work on trimming those crystals up to make sure that they are where they're supposed to be. A lot of the times, over times, you know, crystals, they go off frequency. So, so hopefully that's all happening. It's all okay. See all these electrolytics? They are everywhere. Lots of electrolytics. You can see what's on the side here. Oh, cobwebs. Yeah, let's see if we can get some light on that. Yeah, you can see boards are hiding on the bottom side here. So there's going to have to be components most likely looked after there. There may even, yeah, there's an alignment point there as well. Fun times. Okay, let's tip this the other way. See what's on this side here. You can see there's another board in there. Oh, look, more electrolytics. What a surprise. Wow, lots of electrolytics. It's like an ocean of them in there. So that'll have to come out and I'll have to replace all those nice little blue looking electrolytic capacitors and this big one right here. 6800 at 16. Transformer. Nice golden hue to that. Let's see what's back here. Another little board right there. That's not looking too bad. So, lots of stuff. That should be interesting to get in here and get those out. I'll probably have to remove all the controls off the face and remove this board from the bottom. You can see there's a... Get that on the screw there. You can see that there's some mounting screws here on the bottom, so I'll have to remove the bottom panel. Most likely remove the controls. You can see all the VRs on the front there. They'll all have to be cleaned anyways. I'm going to have to take that entire board out. So quite a job. So if you own one of these things and you have some technician that you really like, that you're asking to repair one of these things and he quotes you some pretty crazy price, don't be surprised. There is a lot of stuff. Let's get that out of the way. There is a lot of stuff to do. You have to remove the entire front panel, remove all of the knobs and everything to get some of the boards out, get in behind there and do some tuning. So, lots of work to redo this. But all in all, it's complete. I noticed there was a little plastic gear in the front there that looks okay. Many of the older Sonys, like the, you know, the CRF320, CRF330, they have broken plastic gears. This gear looks absolutely fine. Which is nice. So the gear is okay. Let's check this out here. These are all looking okay, and they feel nice and solid. You can see the movement down in there. I don't know if you can see that. Let's zoom on into that so you can check that out. Get a little closer. See how they move? The actual top side of the switch is a gear. Is a gear on a gear in there. I can get, see right down inside there. Zoom on into that any closer. This one here. So lots of stuff that's working in this, which is really nice. So if one of these was broken, you can imagine the kind of grief that there would be trying to get something like that working again. You'd need a parts donor or you'd have to make up a, a part with, a, you know, a 3D printer or something like that. Do some measurements. So it's nice that that is all there. As you can see, it's just gross. 
that's all from the vent, just dust and crap settling in here. And so that'll all have to be cleaned up as well. So all in all, it's looking like quite a project and it's not looking like it's going to be too incredibly, you know, big of a deal other than just incredibly time consuming, you know, changing out all the caps and getting to the underside and removing the face and everything. Oh, and the dial lights. Can we see the dial lights in here? No, it's probably going to be hiding between the panels there. Oh, there's one right there. One right here. And there is one right, one right here and one, get that in the shot, right here. So it is only lit on one side, so there's a chance that it can actually be lit on both sides. And I wonder if we can actually see them, if there's a meter light. The meter's down there. And I don't see any light. So it may have a light and it may not. I'm not really too sure. But we'll find that out when the time comes. So all in all, it's looking like a pretty decent project. I'm looking forward to getting started on this. These things are very sensitive receivers when they're working. They work really, really well. So it should be a lot of fun to see how well this thing performs after it's restored. Here's a little bit of RF magic for you. So let's give you an idea of how well this pushes a signal into some components. So this is an LED, brand new, brand new LED. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to twist the leads together. I'm going to completely short out this LED. Okay, so both the leads are tied together. Okay, so I'll put this around here. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can slip the probe through this here. So see that? I'm going to twist these leads together like so. So there's no trickery, no batteries or anything. You see that? Okay completely shorted out. So what I'll do is I'll hold the LED. I'll turn on the signal injection probe. And that's the kind of strength this thing has to push signal into a component. It has enough signal with an LED that's completely shorted out to light it up. And light it up very bright at that. There you go. Lots of time went into the development of this device and it works extremely well. I can't tell you how many times I've used this to make my troubleshooting all that much easier. So, very handy little tool to have around. If you're enjoying these videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and then hang around. There'll be more videos like this in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. And if you want to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap the bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic designs and inventions, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description and I'll also pin the link right at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.